Hello, my name is Bill Gagey, and uh, the title of my paper is Unsustainability. Uh, as the title suggests, I'm going to be arguing today that our economic system, our global economic system, is unsustainable. In a few months, perhaps, or in a very short time, the economy of the world will collapse, will disintegrate. When that happens, most of the people in the world will die. In other words, what I'm going to argue today is that we are the last humans on Earth. You might think I'm a pretty pessimistic person to have such ideas. And I assure you I'm, I'm not a pessimistic person. This has to do with realism, not with pessimism. Why is this realistic? Well, we have to put it in the proper context. Uh, I'll use my uh, if uh, the biologists, paleontologists, and uh, uh, anthropologists have it correct, we humans have been around for over 200,000 years, certainly for more than 100,000 years. For most of this time, we were hunter-gatherers. We were hunter-gatherers. We can see here, uh, this comes from way back when, here, more than 100,000 years, we were hunter-gatherers. If we were to come, go back into the past, 40,000, 50,000 years, Every human on earth in those days did hunter-gathering. That was all they did. About 10,000 years ago, we invented farming. We discovered agriculture uh, and domestication of animals. So suddenly we went from, or gradually we went from hunter-gathering to farming. More and more people started doing farming and fewer people started doing hunter-gathering. In fact, today there's practically no hunter-gathering on earth. Very little anywhere. And uh, surely there's even very little subsistence farming. Most of it is commercial. Almost all of it is commercial farming. But we didn't stay in the agricultural phase for a long time. Uh, about 200 years ago, some countries spearheaded the Industrial Revolution. They started making machines that made farming more efficient. As farming became more efficient, people moved from farming into the cities and uh, they started doing manufacturing. So we didn't stay there for, for long as well. Uh, about 32 years ago, the United States became the first country in the world to become a net service economy. We switched from agriculture to manufacturing. Now we went into, manu into services. And a lot of countries followed suit. Most of Europe today is uh, in a service economy, surely Japan is, and even China has recently, uh, last year, uh, come to the edge where service is almost equal in uh, as far as its uh, gross domestic product is concerned, uh, equals uh, manufacturing, and it, the quantity of people working in services almost matches the number of people who work in agriculture. Uh, India has uh, another big major area, also lots of people working in agriculture, but most of its GDP is uh, obtained from services, not from agriculture. So the question I have is, what is the next phase? What happens when we become efficient in services? When we were efficient in hunter-gathering, we moved, we moved all these people into farming. Farming becomes efficient, we move people into manufacturing, Manufacturing becomes efficient, people who start working in services, where do we move next? What comes after services? The answer is, there is no other category after services. Service is the last category of our human economy. Except that there is one more. And the next phase is unemployment. Unemployment belongs to this series because here, when we were hunter-gatherers, we were fully employed. Every person worked. You have to work when you're a hunter-gatherer because otherwise you die. Here we don't have to work in the uh, service economy. So we move from 
manufacturing services to unemployment. Unemployment is the next category. The unemployment you read about uh, in the United States and in Europe today is not a cyclical temporary uh, phase in our, in, in our economy, in our cyclical economy. It's a structural part of this long-term trend. So, uh, so what is the future? The future is unemployment. As these numbers start coming down, as we become, become more efficient in uh, services here, what will be growing will be unemployment. Another aspect that uh, contributes to this, which makes it uh, very hard to accept uh, 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 any other category other than unemployment, is that a company is in business to sell products. They reduce their costs and they try to increase revenue. They try to increase the number of the, the amount of money that comes in for sales. Well, a company tries to reduce costs, increase sales, and we are doing exactly the opposite with population. Demand is dependent ultimately on the number of people. More people, more demand. The uh, trend for the world is exactly the opposite. This is the world population growth rate since 1963, which was uh, at that point there, it's been dropping. And today it stands, there it stood at 2.3 here at, in the year 2000. It stands at 1.2. By, by mid-century, it'll be at zero, zero population growth. And that includes the whole planet. It includes countries which traditionally have produced lots of people, Pakistan, India, China. All, this is the whole planet. So the whole planet will drive, will come to a stop as far as population growth. That's not what business needs. The ideal business situation is for uh, workers to be fewer and fewer every day and for consumers to grow. But if we first eliminate workers and on top of that population doesn't grow, then at some point that system has to stop. It has to come to a stop. In fact, here's another picture of that same thing. Population that businesses would like to see, people increasing, population that businesses are going to get if CPG, zero population growth, materializes a century, will be like that curve. It will be an S curve that uh, becomes asymptotic. It reaches the asymptote and it's a flat curve. The question is what comes after that? Well, I'm saying that what comes after that is the extinction of man. It has to be because it can't be in no other way. The extinction of man comes about because the reason we produce food today, the reason uh, uh, major companies in the world produce food is for profits. The day that our economy collapses, there will be no profits, no reason for anyone to produce food for you or to deliver it to the cities. So at that point, everybody has to produce his own food overnight. And that's impossible. Billions of people on the planet will die. It's just that simple. Um, so, uh, when is this going to happen? Which is another question people usually ask. You know, return back to this chart, I guess the first one. Oh, over 100,000 years, we were hunter-gatherers. 10,000 years, we were uh, farmers. 200 years, we did industry manufacturing. And for the last 30 years, we went into services. So, how long does it take? for us to get into the unemployment phase, maybe five or 10 years at most. That's what we've got. Questions? Any questions? Yes? Well, I agree with you that uh, we are going to face the unemployment thing, but uh, uh, we have been reading that in next 20, 30 years, the world's population is going to be 9 billion rather than 6 billion. Correct. So you're going, your graph is going downward. You are, uh, well, I'm saying that the, uh, the population will become asymptotic. It will reach the asymptote, right? It will approach the asymptote and peak around 8 or 9 billion people on the planet. That's it. it does, uh, the projections are not for it to continue growing, but to, to stabilize. As people move to the cities, they stop having children. It's just that simple. Well, few of the uh, countries like Japan, they are not producing um, um, children. But in other part of the world, like China, China has controlled its population. But China doesn't need to control its population because 
and there's a, there's a law of, the, of nature called density-dependent birth rates. It happens to plants and animals. It doesn't matter who. As soon as there's a lot, as soon as you have an ant hole, they stop growing. Whether it's cows, whether it's trees, whether whatever you, you look at, the studies have been done for density-dependent birth rates, every country in the world will come to a stop. It doesn't matter if it's Africa, India, China, it doesn't matter. Density-dependent birth rates will stop human population growth. But I think the people would uh, start dying not because of the uh, decrease in population, rather people won't get, there will be lots of people, but commodities won't be uh, enough uh, to support that uh, diet, isn't it? We only have one question to answer, and that's what's the next category after services? Once services become efficient, we are replacing check-in agents at the airport with check-in machines. We are replacing cashiers with self-checkout. We are replacing bank tellers with bank machines. Those are all services, and we are making them more efficient every day. If we're not going to go back to manufacturing, and we're not going to go back to agriculture, surely not to country gathering. We're, we're going to go forward. What's forward? Forward is unemployment. Some people will be out of work, and those who work will maintain those who don't. That's what we have in the civilized world. Thank you. Unemployment. Yes, any other questions? Fine way to end the day. Thank you.